Right, let's get straight into it this straight week. Straight into it. Right, today's video is how to get financial freedom from property. Good topic. Yeah, I mean, it comes up quite a lot. It's what a lot of people contact us for, why they want to work with us. Um, we understand that everyday people aspire to have a freedom of choice. Often people feel trapped by financial stress. It keeps them in their job for 40 years, trading all their time for money, and end up with a pension that pays them less than what they were working for, right? Yep. So. You could be a business owner, you could be self-employed, you could be employed in a, in a job, but you're still stuck trading your time for money and it can pre prevent you from reaching long-term sustainable wealth. Um, so we're going to get into gonna talk about that. today so how you can get financial freedom or on the road to it through property. Mega. I'm Jess, this is Adam with ForTheLandlords.com. We run a letting agency and we help our landlords get more money, reduce the hassle and claim their time back. Indeed we do. We do. So, okay. financial freedom now, through property. The, the, the first point I want to make people aware of here is um, you actually do need some access to financial resources to be able to invest and get on that road. Um, we're not going to sort of start telling you that you can do this with no money down and all of that sort of thing. You can't stop trading your time for money and start earning passive income with no money to invest to begin with. Now, I know Very there's people out there selling courses that will tell you otherwise. I don't believe it. You do need, you need some way, you need a starting point. Work hard, yeah. save, invest. Plenty of people work hard. Um, I was one of those. I've been investing in property for over 20 years now. And before that, I had a business. I might be like you. But I, I own the business, but you know, you work hard in a business, mm. or you work hard in the business you own. Either or. Um, there comes a point for me. It was in my my late twenties, early thirties, where I realised that just working hard wasn't going to produce enough to build my way to let's call it let's call it financial freedom for now. Whatever. We'll talk about what that means for people. Um, it just wasn't going to do it. Um, so plenty of people work hard. You've then got to start saving. Yep. Not many people save, actually. Not many people. I'm, I, I would imagine more of our listeners save than the national average. But you know, um, but if you're doing that, and I was one of those, I was saving. Um, you've got to invest. You've got to do something with it. Otherwise, you won't start moving weight. So, as Adam says, you can't do this on a shoestring. You've got yeah. to work hard, save, and invest. So you've got yourself a, a capital pot. It's now about putting it in the right place and doing the right things with it to build yourself out to a way of, yeah, let's call it again, financial freedom. Yeah, indeed. I mean, what is financial freedom though? In my opinion, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean you no longer have to work, but instead, you know, you don't necessarily need to work full time anymore. Many people don't want to stop working anyway. Mm -hmm. They want to feel, <laughs> yeah, they want to feel part of society. They want to keep themselves busy. Yeah. Um, they don't want to be... Could be a bit of a tip. So if, if anybody's hankering after the, yeah. uh, the retirement thing, just fast forward in your mind to that bit when you really are doing nothing. And um, yeah, you yeah. get bored very quickly. A couple I of mean, months at the very most. That's how much golf you can play or how much stage <laughs> you can do or yeah. how many holidays you can take. Particularly if you've retired, I quasi-retired, early you know i found myself sold a business and what was i doing yeah. uh, none of my mates were, yeah yeah they, they're, they're all at work of course my, they are. Yeah. my wife was busy doing the things she was doing kids all my mates school. are doing my kids at school yeah. i'm sat around there twiddling my thumbs like, what do you do you've got to keep exactly. yourself busy so you know Damn financial right. freedom is it's, yeah, it's you a know, choice it's, I've it's often, your choices often said it's income from property can give you freedoms such as the little things i've made some notes here not looking at the prices on the menu before you're ordering something in a restaurant. You just order what you want. You don't want, you mean you know before you go in the place, you know, if it's yeah. an expensive one or not, but you're not getting all oh, that steak's 28 quid, I'll have the 12 pound burger, you know. Um, you might have an extra couple of holidays a year. Yeah. You might build the extension on your kitchen or something. That's a financial freedom that you can get from a second or third or multiple income stream, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do the bottle of wine analogy? Oh, I like that one, yeah. So that idea that, so you mentioned something that came to my mind. This is, this is an analogy that I heard years ago, but it, it works well. And when you're talking about that feeling of just trying to get ahead, just trying to get ahead, and property can do that for you. If you buy the right house in the right area in the right way, we could maybe talk about that a little bit in maybe in another video. There's plenty of I think we, this is way. going to be a two-part. At least a two-part. At least sure, two. Yeah. It might yeah. go into three, but it's definitely um, going to be a second it, part. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, the bottle of wine analogy is... And this is where um, that freedom comes from. And it comes whilst you're in the journey, it's taking longer than you'd like it to. 
and then all of a sudden you look around and actually you just you don't have to pop out that much further ahead to make it feel very different in your life and, and the bottle of wine is, is the analogy so what it is uh, a bottle of wine doesn't matter what's in the bottle particularly it's got to be wine um, with <laughs> duty on it costs about five pounds so if you want to grow the grapes squish the grapes make them into wine put them in a bottle put a label on the bottle pay the duty big chunk of it, that's the, the duty put it in a box put the box on a uh, on a lorry take the lorry to a warehouse put the warehouse box onto a pallet and basically get it into uh, Waitrose at the end, no matter what's in the bottle of wine, it's going to cost £5 to get it there, which roughly speaking leaves in a £5 bottle of wine about 50 pence worth of wine in the, in the bottle. Yeah. So on a £5 bottle of wine, you've got £4.50 to get it there and 50p worth of wine. And that's the analogy is that's where most people are in their lives. If you think about the world that we live in, pretty much everything is set up for the average. Of course it is, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you buy a car, buy a sandwich, or buy a house, it fits for 95% of the world, of the, of the country. Let's not say the world, that's ridiculous, but, 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 but the yeah. UK. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can buy a car for 10 grand and 100 grand, you know, it fits. Um, you can buy a house for you know, 100 grand or a million. Of course, there's outliers. You can buy really cheap houses. You can buy a, a, a really expensive car. But actually getting A to B car or a house that most people live in, they sit within that 95th percentile. Um, when you go slightly ahead of that, you get so much more quality wine for your, for your money. If you buy a £10 bottle of wine, the wine in it costs £5.50. Yeah. That's a whole lot better wine than... There's a, there's a latent cost of living. And um, that is the bottle of wine and getting it on the shelf. It's the, you've got to buy a car. It doesn't really matter how much it is, but they're all roughly the same. You know, it's going to take that much more out of you if you were in a bit more, a bit more. But as soon as you get a house, two houses, three houses, you're getting yourself into the 95th percentile, 96th indeed. percentile, and but, you're starting to buy nicer bottles of wine. Yeah, indeed. But before you get that house, second, third, fourth house, mm -hmm. you've got to find the time to be able to do that. You've got to find the time to be able to build, optimise or, and or grow a property portfolio. And the majority of the time, that's not going to be in the city where you live. You're not going to be building this portfolio. Most likely, not always, depends where you live, obviously, but mm. probably at a distance. Most of our clients live in the south of England and we buy houses for them in the north. Um, yeah, you the majority. 80, 80%, yeah. yeah, exactly. 80, 20 rule, whatever. Mm. Um, and there's, and there's a mindset about getting your head around that. <clears throat> what about... about um, the distance, though. The distance. So you know. building a property portfolio w uh, away from wrong. the area... I've got some live. clients who we source property in the city where they live. They just haven't got the time to source it themselves. That would be me, um, by the way. I mean, either way, I, I buy far away from... Well, we're, I'm, we're sat in Nottingham now. That's where we live. Um, I used to buy in Nottingham. If I was to buy in Nottingham now, I still wouldn't do it myself. Yeah, of course. Um but I also buy further away and um, you know, Adam's sourcing team do that for me. I'd have stopped a long time ago if I didn't have people to buy the houses for me. Yeah, wait. you've said that so many yeah. times. I mean, yeah. we've got uh, teams of sourcing renovation managers, we call them. They um, allow us to offer our clients a service that, that can get them on the road to financial freedom without having to do the heavy lifting themselves. My guys will source the house, they'll cost and price accurately a renovation. When the house becomes the client's house, they can manage that renovation for them, um, and then they can manage the, uh, the lettings process as well. Um, and like you say, you would have stopped buying years ago. Yeah. Well, actually, that's not true. So I did make a note here, because you've said this a few times. You'd have stopped buying years ago without the team, unless you sacrificed your time. Yeah. You, could, you could have done it. Uh, but so, you just yeah, wouldn't be here course, very yeah. often. I wouldn't be here very often. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I, my choice is I want to be, well, uh, family, be family and friends and around. Yeah. Uh, and um, honestly, buying houses isn't that interesting to me anymore. Building this business, yeah, yeah, yeah. building for the landlords.com is a more interesting proposition than going to look at a um, three bed, grotty, semi, and fit a new kitchen, new bathroom, which I, I'm pretty good at, to be honest. I can find them, I can fix them up, and I, I can rent them out myself. But it gets a bit monotonous. It's cookie cutter which from an investment point of view, great, that's great news. You want, mm. it, you want it boring and consistent and reliable. That's what fri financial freedom is built of. You don't want excitement in your, uh, in your, in your financial freedom uh, quest because that's going to be so, going to be uncertainty. But yeah, I'm, I'm, you, I'm concentrating on the things where I can add value um, that I like doing. 
not that I dislike buying houses, it's just it gets a bit monotonous. And um, right now, it would be even more monotonous. I'd have to drive 200 miles to, yeah. to where I'm buying the houses, yeah. So I think we'll leave it there for today. In the next part, we're going to talk about how you can find that house and find it your way to financial freedom and find it again and yeah. again and again yeah. with a, a actually a quite a simple process um but that is safe steady and will get you where you need to be consistent reliable results that's, yeah. right. that's what financial freedom is built out of steady steps as you walk in there um one final thought we'll leave it there but one final thought is if you have got that fixed point the goal and, and we can give you that. I mean, the, the, the one page landlord success plan says I'm going there and it's built of those reliable steps. Um, it, you don't all of a sudden find yourself there. Mm. That journey is quite rewarding on its way. Yeah, you definitely. Know, if this says I need 10 houses or five houses or whatever it is, one house makes your life a little bit better. If two houses makes it a little better. You'll be starting to drink a nice bottle of wine by house number two or three. So, you know, it doesn't all come last minute. It's, it's a fun journey and uh, Maybe you could do do it together with some of these people. There we go. All right. All right. Bye for now. Cheers.